Do you ever look at the operator selection screen and wonder what operator to pick? Yeah, me too. I have this all the time. In this video, I'll give you one great tip that could be round winning for every attacker. Let's start off with Sledge. A great way to catch the defender off guard is to throw a nade on the floor and then sledgehammer the floor. An enemy underneath won't see the indicator before the floor breaks and the nade will catch them by surprise because they don't have time to run away. You can also use Thatcher's EMP grenade on top of a breach because the range will be big enough. With Asher breaching charge, you can breach the very corner of the the barricade and you won't take damage if you stand against the door while the charge detonates. This works great for rushes. You should never place your exothermic charge of termite on the middle of the breach when there's a bandit tricking player on the other side of the wall. If you place it in the middle, the bandit will be able to trick your exothermic charge either way. If you place it on the left or the right side, it's only a 50% chance he'll get the right one. And this is a tip for Twitch. Instead of having one short drone out, you should put both of them out. This way, the shock drones will recharge their zaps faster. If you're playing Monty and you unshield, enemies usually panic and spray their entire magazine on you. Wait for them to empty the magazine and then unshield again, so you can shoot at them whilst they are reloading. They will be a much easier target this way. And if you haven't already done this with Glass's sniper scope, try a different scopes on a sniper. You'll find that some make it easier to hold angles. Personally, I prefer the Cyber Colo. And yeah, it's okay to roast me for this one in the comments, but just wait until you see how nice the small dot and two small dashes are as a sniper scope. Use a fuse cluster charge on a reinforced wall to clear the utility on the other side. This works especially well with a mute hammer if you place the fuse charge high on the wall. If you flash someone with Bliss's shield, never just run at them without your shield. Usually, flash players will just shoot ahead of them in panic. The chances you're getting killed by their random gun spray is really high in this way. Instead, keep your shield up and try to move to their side so you won't get hit by your random spray of bullets. Use IQ's gadget scanner post plant underneath or above the diffuser to see when someone's diffusing because that device is a gadget as well. If you're using Buck to make the vertical holes, make sure you make all the holes before you peek any of them because if you die, after peeking the first hole, you can't make more holes. Plus, when you have all the holes done, it'll be a guessing game for the enemies which hole you will actually peek from. When you're playing Blackbeard, you can be the most annoying on the window ripple. This way only the shield will be exposed and you'll still be able to peek the enemies. When you're playing Capitao, you can shoot your smoke at a wall or a higher object. The smoke will then turn into a one-way smoke. This means you can see the enemy's feet, but they cannot see yours. Obviously, depending on where you are standing or rappling. There are lots of ways you can use your Hibana's X Kyrus pellets. For example, two of these pellets can be used for a castle barricade or to create a peak hole. When you're using Jackal Scanner, you can see the direction of where the enemy is headed to by looking at the path of their footsteps. And please don't forget, you can use your scanner without having to be aimed in. This will make sure you can still see what's going on around you. And just one more Jackal tip, please. Never ever peek with your gadget on. This makes it really hard to see things well. And if you get shot, your vision will get very blurry as well. Okay, I know that was more than just one tip for Shackle, but I'm trying my best to get some good information for you that is watching this video right now. Also, we're getting really close to 10k YouTube subs, and if you're liking the content so far, please subscribe to the channel. All the support is really appreciated. Let's get on with you. You don't have to toss in multiple candelas on the same spot at the same time, as this won't work to blind the enemies even more. Blind is blind. Either spread them apart or throw one at a time. Just yeeting all your candelas in won't give a better effect. If a Sophia stun doesn't find a target, it will still detonate. So if you wait, but it only detonates late, you at least know that area is clear. Did you know that you can also use Sophia stun to get a defender to stop disabling the diffuser? Using that gadget will stun them off of doing so. And they have to start the process all over again. And for Dokubi, I have a tip against Dokubi rather. But if you drop a phone out of your pocket, 
As a defender, when you die, you know there's a Dokubi in the enemies. You can shoot the phone to make sure Dokubi can't hack it. And with Lion, you gotta keep in mind that there's a lot that defenders can do to counter the Lion scan, such as stand in the proximity of a Mewchammer. Just because you didn't spot anyone with the gadget doesn't mean the area is 100% clear. My tip for Finka would be to ban her. It makes her games way more fun. But no, in all seriousness, don't be afraid to use your adrenaline searchers early in the round if someone has taken just a little bit of damage. There's a 30 second cooldown for the three times that you can use it. So in total, that would be half the round. If your Finca dies early, you can't use it anymore. If the round time is over, you obviously can't use it anymore either. And when you're playing Maverick, you should ask a teammate to peek the line you're making with a blowtorch. You'll be able to pick up sneaky kills on the fenders that are unaware of you being there. When you're playing Nomad, keep in mind an air trap only activates with floor contact, so placing an air jab on a window high up on the wall won't work. You have to place it close to the floor so when the defender jumps out and they hit the floor, that's when they get air jabbed, not just outside of a window. And for gridlock, I also have a tip against her. If you shoot the truck stingers whilst they are still deploying, it'll actually stop them from deploying any further. Nuck is a great operator for those solo distracting pushes. If your team is pushing on one side of the map, it could work really well for you to solo push the opposite side of the map. If you're playing Amaro and you're getting ready for a sneaky rush, ask your teammates to shoot randomly into the air to cover the sound of the grapple when you're using the gadget. And for Kali, the sniper obviously works best on distance, but Kali's secondary SMG is really strong too. Don't be scared to whip that one out on close range engagements. When you're playing Yana, you can bait the enemies into thinking that you're on the replicator. You can do this by pressing the button to activate the gadget, but cancel the gadget halfway through. Shout out to those who commented under my 15 tips and tricks video, saying that you'll have to wait until the yellow triangles appear on your screen before you can cancel out the gadget. You guys are the real homies. When you're playing Ace, shoot down a part of the Selma to open up a smaller hole, which you can use to peek from. This is a bit safer because while peeking, you'll expose a smaller part of your body than when you would have both canisters opened. When you're playing Zero, please don't die with your chems in your pocket, as they give very good information. Zero has so much information with six chems in total, because you have four Argus launchers and two drones. You can set them up to prepare well for a post plant, so even if you die, there's still very useful information on the diffuser. Also for Flores, his drones are immune to Surya gates when the drone is closed up, meaning you can jump your drone towards the lasers and detonate it right before the laser gate to deactivate the gate and to destroy the barricade or utility on the other side of that doorway. When you're playing Osa, punch the shield to make it very difficult for enemies to know what is going on behind the shield. You could easily plant behind the shield without them knowing. And when you're playing Sense, you can hide in the wall as it rolls down. This usually gives a great element of surprise. And that concludes every attack and operator as of right now. So you made it to the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any tips for your favorite operator. Remember to leave a like to the video and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Maybe you'll like these other videos on my channel, such as these 13 tips on how to get more kills or this Goyo guide. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.